Hello and welcome back to my final video in this back-to-back -back series of reactions, analysis, evaluations. My name is Tu Yang. Thank you so much for joining me again in this. It's been really interesting um, doing these videos back-to-back. -back. So what I've done is, what I usually do is, I do the videos and I immediately edit them. Oh, actually, no edits, just the beginning and the end. And I post these videos. So these are definitely what I would call um, first time full reactions. Um, just a little bit of how I usually approach it is, I listen to the first couple of measures just to kind of give me an idea and then I pre predict from there what will happen and I go on. So for example, this is, uh, we'll be listening to The Bass Gang featuring Cole McGinnis on Yellow Flicker Beat, and I believe Peter Barber is the arranger on this, and he also did the mixing and mastery, uh, mastering as well. So what I'll usually do is, instead of using a beat map, you'll notice in my Logic Pro app here, or um, program, is I'll play the beginning, and I'll leave a tempo marking. And usually between two to four measures, if that tempo marking doesn't skip, I'm a princess cut from marble, smoother than a... So, uh, that, and that's how I establish the beat. Rather than trying to do a beat finder, because what, what the beat finder will do is it'll take mostly uh, all the, the high transient information and try to uh, turn that code into the beat for you. Rather than doing that, uh, I always like uh, clipping a little bit here. So, let me... Usually what I like to do is I just listen and feel the music because sometimes it feels like it's in two and maybe not in four. In this case, I'm feeling it in four for now. It might change depending on what the beat does. But if you haven't already, go ahead once again, listen to the entire performance of uh, Yellow Flicker Beat. Link will be in the description below. And then we will begin. Let's see what happens from the very top. Let's try that again. Let me turn off the, the, the click here for you. There we go. Hum. Princess cut from marble, smoother than a stone. And the scars that mark my body, the silver and gold. My blood is a flood of rubies, precious stones. It keeps my veins hot. The fire's found a home in me I move through town I'm quiet like a fire And my necklace is a rope I'll tie it and untie it And now people talk to me We'll go ahead and stop right there I'm just kind of finishing this First section, really, really uh, intense beginning with just octaves and fifths. Um, the beauty about um, distortion is that it's not just used in guitars. Uh, we actually use it in um, the concept of distortion anyways. We use that in uh, any form of music, whether it's organ, whether it's um, choral music. Uh, when you think of the of what distortion and saturation really is. It's just the um, increasing the harmonic content of an instrument. And um, typically you can do that either with your by adding volume per se, or increasing the volume to a point to where the volume clips uh, the instrument. Um, and that can be a form of distortion. In this case, it's just emphasizing the octaves in the fifth. And um, when you th when you think about the core of uh, of the idea, is that that doubling, you know, that movement, it's just, you know, 
one we're in G G sharp minor. Mm, and it stays there. And then it goes down to that C sharp too. Um, and what's really cool is that he leaves that at the very beginning just in isolation and, you know you have a cup you can tell there are a couple of voices on there to kind of give that ensemble feel and really uh, thicken the vo the the vocal sound but the octave uh, that's added later on just really really rushes in almost sounds like a a sub uh, enhancer there but it's actually not uh, in this case and I can uh, yes there is some EQ involved but it's what I love about the sound and I, I'm pretty sure Peter is singing all the way down to a C sharp one and let's listen to that intro uh, halfway through that intro um, so C sharp two right there um, I'm a princess cut from marble, there's C sharp smoother one. than a stone. And the scars that mark my body, the silver and gold. So if you can see that, that double, that uh, full octave, right? Um. And it's really, really uh, present there. And um, what what an amazing sound. It's just, yeah, great, great, great introduction. I love the contrast between Peter's and Col Colm's voice here, which is really, really interesting. Uh, when I when I hear Peter, I, I am, I'm used to hearing him in his uh, full operatic bass baritone sound, because that's always, uh, when I listen to voices, I, I, th I like to hear... Um, where they are at, and also the potential and the flexibility and uh, the musicality at their best within their prime, if that makes sense. You know how usually if you see, when you see someone do like a really cool trick, and then you're like, wow, if they can do this, imagine if they had this um, uh, this other thing that they can do, like a parkour, right? And when you're jumping over buildings and you're doing all these flips and you're thinking, well, you know, what if they did this instead? Or what if they're able to do this in this course and they'd look like this or they maybe they do this instead. And when I hear voices, I, I hear the, the acrobatics. I hear the possibilities of, of tone and sound, um, timbre per se, and uh, also even roles, um, like operatic roles. So when I hear Peter, I, I hear these things um, just you can think sometimes in an instant, sometimes like uh, over uh, over the course of uh, of hearing his voice. Smoother than a stone. And yet here he really, really intentionalizes, if that's even a word. <laughs> he he puts his intention first. It's not he could have easily sang this uh, as as an aria if he wanted to, but he didn't choose to do that because it needs to serve the music uh, in this case. And uh, Combs contrast here and the scars that mark my body the silver and gold yeah so it almost has that uh, a little bit more um, vocal vocal fry beginning vocal fry ending and what that does is that increases the the amount of tension uh, in the voice but just enough to where you get like a little bit more um, more grunt or more uh, smokiness in, in the voice without overdoing it. Now, there, there's obviously a natural smoker's voice, but in order for you to safely, do, safely uh, approach that and have a little bit more, um, add a little bit of um, distortion or saturation in your voice without overloading it, is one, get very close to the mic, two, add just a little bit more tension in your voice, but not, and also re you relax, in terms of tension, you increase uh, those uh, thickening muscles where it's like, mm, 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 where that, that M sound, that thickness uh, of the vocal folds come through. And then you give up on the stretching muscles, which is the, ooh, 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 the head voice muscles. So what you're doing is you're really concentrating on that lower lower mm, 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 that lower sound right there and so when you're singing you kind of just ease into that and you give up give, give it up immediately so you don't stay there 
and you do it softly, of course, because you don't want to, you do not want to overload the entire mechanism. So listen to Colm as he approaches that again. In the scars that mark my body. In the in the scars. How how he's approaching that, and then there's that breathiness as well. And so it's a really, really cool combination uh, in this, and it's very fitting in this piece. The silver and gold. Very nice. My blood is a flood of rubies, precious stones. What I love about uh, Bobby is that when he sings down there, he's not singing, My blood is a flood. He's singing, my blood, there's a full connection, right? My blood is a... And then he eases off into, um, when he's moving up into the uh, the upper second octave, into the third octave, it's almost like it becomes a synth wave as opposed to a bass guitar. So listen to that approach. Blood is a flood of rubies, precious stones. It keeps my veins hot, the fire's found a home. Yeah, and really cool. Um, Marwin here does uh, keeps it within the context of his voice, right? Because he's moving up a little high, uh, a little bit higher, and so there's a little bit more of that of his tessitura, more of his timbre showing, and it's it's a really cool because it's it really bridges the gap, almost like it's going from um, from dark to mid, mid and light, and intentionally mid because uh, middle is in between that. Uh, the mix uh, of a light and a dark sound, if you want, if we want to call it that. Ruby's precious stones. This keeps my veins hot. So he's pulling the, the, the range up. Home in me. I move through town. I'm quiet like a fire. Very nice. And, and uh, Tommy there really just has that that edge in his voice, which which I really like because it it starts to brighten up a little bit in here and intentionally show uh, as well even the background is uh, the fire behind there is brightening brightening up and let's see what let's see what fire. peter does here in my necklace is a rope i'll tie it and untie it and now people talk to me but nothing ever hits home. People talk to me, and all the voices just burn holes. I'm done with it all. Really cool. Going to that flat seven, it's almost like it's moving, preparing us to go somewhere else. So let's listen to the chords now, uh, having Peter and Calm uh, sing a duet there and blending their their tone. Uh, again, I'm trying to stay away from the lyrics just because that'll be an entire different different evaluation. But I do try to bridge some the gap as I go through this. You know, this is a first time reaction. This, I have no idea what's going to happen. So, <laughs> I move through town. I'm quiet like a fire. In my necklace is a rope. I'll tie it and untie it. And now people talk to me, but nothing ever hits home. People talk to me. Yeah, see how it opens in there? So you got. That's what I'm hearing. Let's listen. Nothing ever hits home. People talk to me in all the. Get that tension. We have a B, so a five. And you know, and if we were to, to deal with classical music here, we'd have a resolution to this. Then here, but that's not where the music is gonna go. You can just tell that it's it's. Oh, I mean, I previewed it a little bit already for you. It is going back to the G sharp minor. Voices just burn Unison. I'm done with it all. This nice. is the start of how it all is. They used to shout my name, now they whisper it. I'm speeding up. Is the red, orange, yellow flicker beat sparking up 
So lo- I love that um, it's that there's a chill um, behind it as well. P- progress, progressive, progression wise. Let's see. Here, I never watched the stars. There's so much down here, so I just try to keep up with them. Red, orange, yellow, flicker beats sparking up my heart. Let's uh, slightly isolate that uh, that voice uh, in there. Notice how it's dominating in this case, um, sl- slightly different from the beginning, right? So the texture is becoming richer, and you have, uh, I believe, Peter going up to an F sharp. So listen to that line. Blades in double time. D sharp. And now people talk to me. I'm slipping now. All the way up to that F sharp. So it's, uh, if you want to think of it as kind of like a, um, just a different idea, a counter melody in, in a sense, or really just an isolated instrument, like a, um, an obligato, if, if you want to even call it, uh, I mean, I'm trying to look for some parallel between uh, why why we as musicians we do these do these things, right? And when you introduce a new idea that's so important to to the music, the the obligato. Uh, you, typically, you hear it in the um, the oboe. If you're thinking of uh, Bach, like a Bach cantata, uh, you'll hear um, a melodic phrase that's not in the piece, but it's uh, there. There is an important part of it that has to be that that has to be presented you can't leave it out right you can't like leave out the you can leave out the fifth sometimes you can leave out certain harmonies and you can leave um keyboard keyboardists when they play that uh, i mean if they're trying to play all all vocal parts uh, together they sometimes if they have to they'll leave out certain certain parts or if there's a bass accompanying then they can leave out that part whereas an obligato in this case there is even the the idea of obligation, right, um, which is kind of the the English derivative of that. Um, the the melody there is uh, is more important, n- not more important than than the actual uh, phrasing itself, but important enough to where it needs to stay. It actually, has to be in there. Now, is this an obligato? Probably not. I'm just trying to find some parallels between uh, what I understand as music. Uh, what works for me, what I grew up with, what I've studied, and just finding the relationship between uh, other other types of music. Because when you think of it and approach it that way, you tend to you you tend to appreciate it at a different level uh, than just beyond. Wow, this is cool. I like it because I like it. And sometimes that works. Sometimes you don't need to evaluate anything. You just need to enjoy. And other times you might want to dig in a little bit and see if you can find something else beyond what what you listen to. So really cool. Together and I made a little prison locking up everyone who ever laid a finger on me. There it is. I'm done with it all. I love that. Um I, I know uh, Peter call uh, Peter calls it uh, chest fry and uh, rightly rightly so because there are when when you hear that term thrown around and I'll be doing a video to kind of help us not not really um, 
settle anything, but just to help us find a little bit more common ground and understanding. But uh, I've I have noticed that when Peter is um, saying about talking about chest fry, uh, his specifically is really really um, impeccable in terms of technique because there is that element of fry where yes it is thicker, the folds are thicker and they're becoming slack, shorter. But he's also maintaining enough uh, phonation, enough air and length to where he can uh, sing down there with uh, some integrity and some clarity. And um, in this case, you know, is it full chest? I'll, I'll let him. I'll let him let you know. Is it chest fry? I really don't don't care because at this point, I'm just hearing a solid G sharp one. And you know, even on my lowest days, I have a G sharp one. Is it? Does it sound great? Probably not. Is it projected? I don't know. <laughs> uh, sub sub G one, yes. Chest fry G one. I'm not much of a, a of a, a chest fry type person uh, when I sing because I don't have. I'm. I haven't been able to develop that that sense of release as well as tension that occurs. So listen to that. If it's chest fry, yeah. Well. Let's not even worry about that. Yeah, is it subs? Who, who knows? Uh, I'll, uh, all I'm worried about right now, and I, I tend to, yeah, sometimes I'll be like, oh, yeah, this is subs, this is fry. At this point, uh, that G sharp one is has integrity and is singable, and we want to make sure that we understand that color and timbre is is really important and then of course technique and stability and right here they have it in state in spades so really nice g sharp one mm, you know if you want to keep it there that's fine what if you are singing uh it it in whatever technique you have you want to make sure that you maintain the vibrancy of your voice as well and the integrity of the vowel. So here it's it's a lot easier to hum actually because you know if you want to do SOVT, the semi semi occluded vocal tract uh, exercises, you know, just closing your mouth really really helps you with maintain the proper pressure for your vocal folds. So I highly recommend humming, and it sounds great on in music as well if used properly. I'm done with it all This is the start Of how it all ends They used to shout my name Now they whisper in I'm speeding up And this is the Red, orange, yellow Flicker beat Sparking up my heart We're at the start The colors disappear I'll never watch the stars so much down here So I just try To keep up with them Red, orange, yellow Flick the beat Sparking up my heart Nice And this is the Red, orange, yellow Flick the beat Sparking up my heart And this is the Red, orange, yellow Flick the beat So let's go to this pose right here. I, I, I just really enjoy that, having that uh, yellow flicker, that uh, flame in it within the control. And what an amazing uh, demonstration uh, of belting right there. So uh, both from Colm and Peter, all the way to an A sharp, right? And he's going back down and then going up, bending, sliding up portamento. All the way up there so yeah really really really, really lo loving this arrangement i like that it's um not to leave uh, this out either but uh peter is also doing the vocal percussion and uh, i know he's he said before that he does he used to do vocal percussion and he's done it before uh, i'm really enjoying it i like the the snare the hi-hats are interesting in that they sound like um flickers all the way through which is uh, i 
would assume that is also intentional uh, with the title as well because it's not just it's not just your regular but it sounds like it's yeah I have a I have to get pretty close to get that I have um a noise gate on here sounds like it's moving uh kind of all over the place in a little bit sounds like it's going to um a one if we're in the minor it'll be like a one six right there and then to the g sharp one <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in to the Bass Gang's recent cover of Yellow Flicker Beat, originally by Lord, featuring the legendary, the insanely talented Colin McGinnis. And another big shout out to Nicole Waters for doing the sensational video editing on this project. And now, I'm sad to say it, we are at the end of May the Bass Be With You Volume 2. But rest assured, the Bass Gang is going to be more active now. We're going to be putting out more content. We're going to be active on our social media. And we will be doing more covers more regularly than we have in the past. This is possible because of all the support you guys give us, especially on Patreon. If you haven't yet, go check out the Bass Gang's official Patreon page where you can get really, truly awesome benefits going up and up the tiers. If we can raise enough money on Patreon, we have some plans for all of us to actually get together for the first time to shoot music videos. Another way to support us is to buy the official Bass Gang merchandise. And you can find that in the description below along with the link to Patreon. And with that guys, I thank you for all the support, for all the likes, for all the comments, for all the shares, for the subscriptions, for the donations we get through Patreon, all of it makes the bass gang what it is and we're so happy to have you along for the ride and let me just assure you this is just the beginning on that note until the next release i will see you guys on patreon i will see you guys in the bass gang discord server on the social media and until then may the bass be with you Well, there you go. So, Peter, thank you for the outro as well, <laughs> in this case. Now, uh, please make sure you support them. Um, what's what's great about these videos, and just as Peter said, uh, this was the end of their, their videos that they did back in June, I believe. And it's been, it's been so busy with me uh, over the summer, you know, uh, help do, doing uh, many, many other things, and then uh, getting sick uh, within the these la just this earlier this month that kind of changed everything i'm kind of i am sad that this is the end of this uh volume but also glad that i was able to stretch it out and put it at the end of my series here and um it just kind of worked out that way and so thank you peter thank you bass gang thank you column for uh everything uh for um allowing me uh, the privilege to um uh, to review and to listen to evaluate these videos and so, um, just like how Peter said, um, I'm able to bring these videos to you uh, in the comfort of my, of my home and when I have time. Um, thanks to your support as well as you watch the channel, as you share the music, uh, as you donate, whatever it is that you, that you do, your interaction is truly appreciated. And it allows me more time, it gives me a little bit more freedom uh, in my work when, uh, uh, when there is... Uh, support in those ways, whether it's interacting, whether it's just sharing the video, watching the video, um, they all, everything adds up. So truly, truly, I appreciate it. We are at the end of this set of reaction videos. Um, in the following week, I will, f I have some, some something for you guys too. Yes, there is a reaction video and yes, there is some music uh, involved uh, in this following week. So stay tuned. And I will see you all next time. We are right at the 30 mar minute mark. Um, hope you have a great day. And we'll see you later. <laughs>